guys, what is up? It is I, James Penrose here for my next video on my channel. Welcome to my next video. And um, as you can tell from those images at the start of the video, they were kind of creepy. Um, but that's the whole point of this video. This video is going to be my thoughts on why I think that the Wyatt family going solo, like each individual member going on their own different paths, is best for business and why it's good and why it's not a bad thing and why people shouldn't have to waste their time bitching moaning and complaining about, oh, why are they breaking up? It's no reason, it's stupid, it's a... You know? I want to give reasons why it's best for business and why it's good. Um, well, first of all, I want to say that, um, for those of you that don't know, by, if you should know by now, the Wyatt family, all members have gone solo. Um, starting off with Bray Wyatt, um, who's in a current program with Dean Ambrose, who it's pretty obvious now they're going to have a match at Survivor Series. It's not confirmed yet by WWE. Um, but right now that's what they have the sights set on and quite honestly, it's this feud fits perfectly I said it in the Hell in a Cell review. I will say it again. I might sound like a broken record, but you know what? What the hell? These two gimmicks are the same but different, but then again it fits well because you have Bray Wyatt This crazy evil psychotic guy who's a heel and Dean Ambrose is the same but in a good way because he's the face um, And this again is one of those matches where it's a win-win situation where I don't really care who wins I don't mind because all I know is we're going to see a really great match. You just hear the names, and you already know, right off the bat, we're going to see a good match, guaranteed. Um, unless they surprise me and shit the bed, which, obviously, that probably won't happen. If it does, by some miracle, then whoa. But in all honesty, this match will definitely be a great match to see. And I say, you keep on this, you keep promoting this feud, and you keep it going till TLC, or the, even Royal Rumble time. You keep it going till there, because I'm loving what they're doing now. I mean, it's not... Well, I thought it would be at the start. I thought it would be like a lot of contact, a lot of like brawls back and forth. But no, it's just Bray Wyatt playing the simple mind games, which is what he's best at. It's what his character is best for. Um, and it's simple. It's simplistic. It's not over the top and too complicated and not rushed, um, which is the biggest mistake in a, in a feud like this. If you rush it, it's just going to shit the bed and it's going to get stale. So they're gradually building it up, which I like and what which I think is cool, and Bray Wyatt going on his own path right now with Dean Ambrose is a perfect fit, and that's why it's awesome. Moving down the line, um, last week I was bitching and moaning com and complaining, and said, oh, where the fuck's Luke Harper, where the fuck's Eric Rowan? Well, we saw them this Monday night on Raw with, um, well, to be honest, I wasn't too happy with what they did with Eric Rowan. He was just standing there staring at Renee Young, took the mask off and said, pretty, and Renee Young said, thanks, in this kind of sarcastic way and walked off, kind of freaked out. And... Yeah, it was kind of funny, but at the same time, it was like, well, are they going to do some storyline with Renee Young and Eric Rowan, where Eric Rowan is like a sadistic, you know, freak who can't keep around, who's going to like stalk her constantly and try to maybe do a kidnapping? I don't know. If that, if they actually are going to do that, then wow, that is the biggest pile of trash. But no, I could definitely see him going better places. Um, it's just who, what they're going to do with him in the future. Like, it, I'm sure he won't go down the Renee Young kidnap angle. Surely not. Um, wouldn't surprise me if they did, but I would not like it. Um, but what I am going to like, though, and what the main portion of this video is going to be on, is the other white family member who's going on his own separate path. Starting from this Monday Night Raw, we saw a crazy, weird-ass vignette promo, which we all should know that it's Luke Harper. A lot of idiots were commenting on the vid video on W.com saying, it's CM Punk, it's CM Punk, oh, it's Heath Slater, it's um, fucking Brad Maddox, it's fucking, like, they're just listing names off the bat without actually thinking through their skulls who it obviously is, which we all know it's Lou Carper, because you saw the long hair in the background, you heard the voice, you heard the lines, which were heard in a couple of White Family promos beforehand, repeated in this one. And it was just, it fucking scared the shit out of me, to be honest with you. The first time, well, I knew... I saw an image with the eyes of Luke Harper, which we all know who it is. And I saw the eyes and I'm thinking, what the hell? And I clicked on the video to see what it was. And I did not know the eyes were going to pop up like that. And when the eyes popped up from out of nowhere, I lost I lost my shit. I fucking, I fucking shit my pants. I did not see it coming. And the promo was just, it was just so creepy. He said everything, oh, I can't remember what he said. But he's like, sometimes I see things that just ain't there. Oh, but I see you, boy. I'm going to piece myself back together with pieces of you. That was what he said. That was the message. Um, and I say, once again, you just keep on promoting these vignettes. You keep promoting it until TLC, where you have him finally return and make an impact. And I don't know. I can see him at Survivor Series, actually, um, interfering in the Bray Wyatt-Dean Ambrose match and help, helping Bray Wyatt win. Um, I'm not saying the right 
family will reform again. But I'm just saying, you know, you got to keep all three of them relevant at the same time. Well, not at the same time, but, you know, all relevant at, at a convenient time. So I could see uh, Luke Harper returning and interfering in the Bray Wyatt-Dean Ambrose match and helping either Dean Ambrose or Bray Wyatt win it. Um, I don't really know what they're going to do with Luke Harper, but I'm so, so looking forward. You saw that promo and you already know he's coming to make an impact. He... I can't even begin to describe what the promo was like. It was weird. It was full of eyes everywhere. And I'm like, what the hell did I just witness? Like, you thought Bray Wyatt's separate promos were creepy. You need to check out that one. If you, The image was just one thing. But the whole video, which I might post a link... I probably will post a link for you guys in the description, if I remember. So you guys can watch that vignette. It was, it was fucking creepy. Um, so, in honesty, guys, all three of these guys going on their separate paths... It's going to go to great things. I mean, if the Shield can separate and go on great paths, I mean, look at Roman... Well, Roman Reigns is injured, fair enough. But before that, he was doing all right. He was getting a lot of um, fan reactions when he was feuding with Randy Orton and was almost close to winning the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. But we all know he wasn't going to because it was going to lead up to Cena and Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam. But at that time, Roman Reigns was getting a lot of, like, good reactions from the crowd. His might skills do need a little bit of work. Um, but all three members of the Shield have disbanded. And right now, they're pretty much going on good separate paths. Seth Rollins, Dean Ambrose, they've had, they've had their feud and it was great. Um, when Roman Reigns comes back, I don't know if he's going to go into a, a feud with Seth Rollins because he was supposed to have a match with him at Night of Champions, but that never happened due to his injury. Um, but if the Shield can go to, to go to great places, if they're going solo, then why can't the Wyatt family? The Wyatt family can do just the same. Would I have liked to see a little bit more of them as a stable, as a unit? Yes, but, you know, the hell with it. You know, as... Individuals, they can do great things just as well as a team. So I'm looking very forward to seeing what they do in the future with these guys, especially Luke Harper, because Luke Harper is the one that's been standing out in everyone's minds. As much as talented as Bray Wyatt is at vignettes, cutting promos and wrestling, Luke Harper, for his size, agility, um, and his promos, like the one I just mentioned, oh my God, like it's so unique. Things we don't see from big guys that are starting to do it a lot now, like suicide dives through the middle rope, um, a lot of like agility moves, like kicks and stuff, and that alligator w roll that he does when he's like on the floor and he's like rolling his opponent. It's called the alligator roll. I, lo I love that finisher, trying to get the opponents all dizzy. That's a cool move. Um, and yeah, in all honesty, guys, that has been my thoughts on how the Wyatt family going solo is best for business. I hate that phrase, but you know what? It's the best way to put it. Um, so you guys comment down below and tell me what you think WWE could possibly do with the Wyatt separately, with Bray Wyatt, Luke Harper and Eric Rowan. Um, and leave your suggestions in the comments down below, um, if you have any. Um, I, know, I know it's hard because we don't know yet. I mean, uh, it's hard, but we'll, I'm looking forward to seeing what they're going to do. So other than that, guys, thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you guys like this video, comment this video, subscribe to my channel. Alex Wilkerson and Connor Kenway, two great friends of mine, you guys can subscribe to them. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it guys. Thank you guys for watching this video. I'm James Penrose. All I can say is peace out my brothers